This video is for problem number 39 from page 337, but it's also the video to help you understand how to use the chart method for organizing your synthetic divisions into a chart. It's a shortcut for synthetic division. And uh, so you can watch this video whether or not you need help with number 39. Perhaps you just need help with understanding how to put your synthetic divisions into the chart. Chart or table, you could call it either one. Okay, so we have a function f of x, and part a is to list all possible rational zeros. And remember that I usually say the word roots, and the book says the word zeros, but it's the same thing. So all possible rational zeros, that's what we call APRR, all possible rational roots. And to do that, we use the rational root theorem, which tells us that if you look at the constant here at the end, that its factors will give us the numerators of our rational roots. So the numerators would be all the possible factors of 12, plus or minus all the factors of 12, plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And then the rational root theorem also says that if you look at your leading coefficient, ours is 6, you'll get all the possible denominators of your rational roots by using all the factors of 6, 1, 2, 3, and 6, plus or minus. Okay, so if we make the combinations of all those numerators over all those denominators, we get all possible rational roots. That means this is our um, candidate pool. These are the only things that could possibly be rational roots, and only some of them will be, but we'll draw from this pool. So to be systematic about it, I'm going to take all of my numerators and put them over 1. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Then I'm going to take all of my numerators and put them over 2. So that would be 1 half. 2 over 2 is one we already have. 3 over 2. 4 over 2 we have, 6 over 2 we have, and 12 over 2 we have. Now take all of the numerators and put them over 3. So 1 over 3, 2 over 3, 3 over 3 we already have, 4 over 3 is new, 6 over 3 we have, and 12 over 3 we have. Now take all the numerators and put them over 6. So 1 over 6, 2 over 6 we have, 3 over 6 we have, 4 over 6, 6 over 6, and 12 over 6 we have. So this is our APRR list. So that was part A. Part B, find all rational zeros. So now we're actually going to find the roots. And this is where the chart comes in. So what we do to organize all of our synthetic divisions is we start with a zero row. So give yourself plenty of room and zero in the middle with room for rows above and rows below. And the coefficients of the polynomial go here, 6, 17, negative 31, and negative 12, which would be your remainder if you were dividing by x minus 0. So make that in its own column. That's the remainder column. Remember to look and see if you need any zero placeholders in the middle. But it looks like we have all the powers 3, 2, 1 and 0 without skipping anything, so we don't need any placeholders in there. Make sure your zero row stands out because every time you make a new row, you're going to be using the numbers from the zero row. So use a highlighter or a different color or lines around it or all of the above, whatever it takes to make sure you remember to go back to your zero row every time. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do my one row. That would be if one is a root. So when we do synthetic division, the first thing we do is we put the number in the box. So here's my number in the box. And then we bring down the first number. Well, here I need to bring up the first number. So I bring up the six. Then we take six, we multiply it by the number in the box, and then we add the next number. So six times one plus 17, and that goes here. Then we take that number multiply it by the number in the box, 23 times 1, and add the next number, and that would give us negative 8. And then we take negative 8, multiply it by the number in the box, and add the next number, and that would give us negative 20. So let me show you normal synthetic division. If I was doing this, I would have 1 in a box, and then I would have the coefficients from the problem, 6, 17, negative 31, negative 12, and I would bring down the 6, Multiply it by the 1, write it here, and add. Multiply it by the 1, write it here, and add. Multiply it by the 1, write it here, and add. 
So notice that what we got right here are the same numbers we would have gotten down here, but we didn't take up the space to write this row. That was kind of done in our heads. And the starting row, that is our zero row. So every time we do a new synthetic division, we're not going to have to do write all three of these rows again. We're just going to write a single row. Okay, let's move on and do the row for two. So put the two in the box, bring up the six. Six times two, add the next number in the zero row. So six times two plus 17 is 29. 29 times 2 plus the next number in the zero row, and that's 27. 27 times 2 plus the next number in the zero row, and that's 42. So we didn't get a root for 1, we didn't get a root for 2. Let's keep going. Let's do 3. Bring up the 6. 6 times 3 plus the next number in the zero row, 35. 35 times 3 plus the next number in the zero row, 74. 74 times 3 plus the next number in the zero row, 210. Didn't get a zero. It's okay. We'll find one eventually. Don't worry. Let's go ahead and do negative 1. Bring down the 6. 6 times the number in the box, so 6 times negative 1, plus the next number in the zero row, so plus 17, always going back to the zero row. We get 11. 11 times the number in the box, so 11 times negative 1, plus the next number in the zero row. I have a number trying to escape. Let's get it back. Okay. 11 times negative 1, plus the next number in the zero row, would be negative 42. Negative 42 times negative 1 plus the next number in the zero row. That would be 30. Okay, still no roots, but let's keep trying. Let's do negative 2. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a few more roots um, quickly with this pause so you don't have to listen to me saying all these numbers over and over again. So perhaps you can also pause and make a few rows and then we can compare our numbers and see if we're doing it the same way. Okay, check it out. So I made a few more rows and um, I just didn't lose heart. I kept going because I know this problem is doable. I wouldn't give it to you if it's not doable. And so I kept going and I got that negative 4 is a root, so that is super exciting. And then the other great thing is that even though there are two more roots to find still, remember that what you have here in the negative 4 row represents the remaining polynomial, and that would represent the remaining quadratic because we started with a cubic, degree 3. When you divide by one thing, you're going to have a quadratic, degree 2. So let's take this over here, and let's write this as 6x squared minus 7x minus 3. Let's set it equal to 0, and we're going to solve that um, for x, and that will give us the last two roots. And maybe it's factorable. If not, you can use the quadratic formula. I happen to know that this one is factorable. So let's see here. I believe we're going to have something like that. Let's double check. Mm -hmm, that works. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve each one, and we get negative one-third. And then over here, set that equal to zero, solve for x, and we get three-halves. Now let me just show you something. If you look back at the synthetic division chart, you will notice that there was a sign change right here between remainders. And remember that remainders are also y-coordinates of points. So if your y-coordinate changes from negative 20 to positive 42, the only way for that to happen, if you're at negative 20 and then you're at positive 42 and you're on a polynomial, the only way for that to happen is for you to pass through the x-axis. So there is a root in there. So for us, 
uh, negative 20 was at x equals 1, and positive 42 was at x equals 2. So somewhere between 1 and 2, there is a root. And indeed, that is 3 halves. And then the same thing happens down here, from negative 12 to positive 30. There's a sign change. So that tells us that the y values are going from negative 12 to positive 30. Positive 30 for x equals negative 1, negative 12 for x equals 0. So your graph is going from positive to negative. So there is a root between 0 and negative 1. And that root happened to be negative one-third. It all makes sense together. Okay, the last thing we need to do for part B is to write down what our roots are. So just to make a list, we had, you can call them roots or zeros, I call them roots. We had x equals negative one-third, three halves, and the one that we found in the table was negative four. Okay, part C of the problem is to write the linear factors, write the factored form of the problem. So, because of the root x equals negative 4, we have the factor x plus 4. And then from the factoring that we did over here, we also have 3x plus 1, and we have 2x minus 3. Now, I would not get these factors from just looking at the roots and writing something like x plus 4, x plus 1 third, and x minus 3 halves. I would not do that because look at these fractions in here. This polynomial, if you were to multiply these three together, it would have all kinds of rational fraction e coefficients, and it wouldn't be the original polynomial that you wanted. So let's not do that. Let's keep them all with nice rational, or excuse me, nice integer coefficients so that when we multiply them all together, we get the integer coefficients that we started with. There we go.